Hello, this is Casey from Harlan Productions. Today I'm going to show you how to stream a PC monitor over to a Apple TV so you can play games in the living room. Okay, to get started, we're going to need to download two different software. One for the PC and one for the Apple TV. This software is going to become what is considered a capture card. It'll put your computer's screen and audio on the network to be picked up on the other side on the Apple TV. So first, we need to go to your preferred browser of choice. You're gonna type in ndi.video and you'll get this screen here. And what we wanna do is go to NDI Tools, click that, it's gonna take us to the core suite. And basically you wanna download this pack this bundle pack. So you just click that, the download will happen, install, and once it's all done, we want to open that software. You will be greeted with a page to register. I've already skipped that page. Put in your information that you feel comfortable putting, and you'll be greeted with this screen. So what we want to use is screen capture, but not specifically this screen capture. We, we want to use the HX1. And to get to that, there's a gear icon here. You want to click this gear icon, Screen Capture HX. This one uses the GPU. In my case, an NVIDIA GPU will use the NVENC encoders to encode my screen to put it on the network so that the other device can see it. All right, so we, ch we click that. It'll change. You can see now it's changed to this. But we still need to launch it. So we got to click this button again. And as you can see there at the bottom, it has populated screen capture HX. We want to right click on that. It'll open some menus. In my case, I would like to see my mouse cursor on the other monitor, which we'll set up here in a moment. So I'm gonna check that, it's already checked. My audio source, now this, you can choose whatever audio source you wanna send, but I recommend choosing the audio default. This will be whatever your computer's output is will get sent over to the other device. Frame rate, you can choose specific frame rate if you wanna go for that, or you can do monitor, whatever you prefer. Same with resolution, you can dedicate 1080. I recommend sticking with 1080 as that is a standard and based on your network cabling, you may be limited on just a 1080 signal. This is making a video in real time. It's encoding a video in real time to be picked up on the network on the other side. So 1080 is what I recommend, 60 is what I'm going with. So that's already my highest bandwidth there. Bandwidth, and this is a great point, I am doing ultra bandwidth, meaning I'm using as much data upload speed and encoding that I can to ensure I get a fast and high quality image over on my Apple TV. I am also using the HEVC encoder, which is basically H.265. It's a better encoder for higher quality with a lower bit rate needed once it gets over to the network. Okay, so now that's all set up, I am technically streaming. This monitor is being sent over the network to whatever wants to pick it up. So on the other side, I need to install an app, another NDI app on my Apple TV. So let's go do that. All right, so we are looking at my Apple TV. I've already pre-opened my app store and typed in NDI. And as you can see, there's a few choices. The one that we're going with is the one that's highlighted on the left, NDI Monitor TV by Senna Monitor. Now this is a paid app, and this may deter some of you from wanting to get it. It is $49.99 as of this recording. It is a bit of a steep cost, but to me, it's paid it off instantly as soon as I was able to start playing video games on my Apple TV. So, you wanna install that app, and there's another step. Once it's installed, you wanna make sure to go to the settings, 
go to app. Once you're in here, you want to find the app. And there it is, NDI monitor. Open that. And we want to ensure that it has high res NDI turned on, optimized interlace, which can help for some of the video playout stuff from the computer. And the rest can be left as is, unless you're specifically setting up network access or other groups. I, in this case, am not. All right, so once that's all done, go back to the main home screen. You can see that it downloaded on the lower side of the screen there. So we're gonna open this. It's going to have a title screen. I've already had a selection chosen, so you're gonna see color bars now. I'm sending color bars from my computer in a different software. But all you gotta do is tap the screen and you will be given options what you want to stream over to this TV. So there's four choices for me because I am using recording software to send an output to this monitor. That's the color bars. I'm also using that capture software to record this video. And then there are two other choices that are important to us. The NVIDIA GeForce 2080. There are two of them. And that means that I have two monitors on my desktop. So it is giving me the option to choose one monitor or the second monitor. So that software is scanning my computer and giving me those two choices. And they are live on the network right now to be grabbed. So I want to choose specifically monitor one. That's the one that has the NDI monitor on it. And there it is. So that's the monitor. Now there is technically a delay, but it is so small that I don't believe people will notice it in actual gaming or entertainment because that software NDI is rendering the computer screen using the actual uh, computer GPU. And for example, I will grab the task manager and drag it over. And as you can see, it is encoding right here, this screen over to the network. And then the network itself is also upstreaming, sending video. Now, you're probably wondering how much NDI encoding does it actually take to run the screen and play a game at the same time? In my experience, I've been able to play Cyberpunk 2077 on medium ray tracing settings with a 2080 and stream it over to this screen at no problems. All right, let's launch a game. See what that's like. I have a PlayStation remote that will be plugged in with USB. That way I can have direct fine control. Bluetooth works fine as well. If you have that, uh, you know, whatever controllers you feel comfortable playing with, or, you know, keyboard and mouse, if that's your thing as well. For me, being able to sit back on the couch with a controller and playing a game from my PC in my living room, streamed over the network to this monitor, is completely worth it. I'll get in right into a game here and show you a little bit of the latency with moving my camera back and forth. So you can kind of see there the latency. I'm only recording this in 60 frames a second, so you're only going to be seeing it in its realist real time. Pretty small. As far as like a game like this where it's pure action, I could totally play without any problems. Especially, you know, laying back on the couch and enjoying my, my comfort in a game that's just fun to play. Now, if this was a me streaming for a competition, I wouldn't want to do it like that on here. But for content that is like this, where it's just story driven and fun to play and not really critical on timing. Yeah, love it. It's great. And there you have it. That's how you set up a stream from your PC using NDI basically capturing the screen, audio and video, and sitting it onto your network. And then wherever you want to stream it out, watch it back 
You can use an Apple TV or any other device that has the NDI monitor in it. Uh, say like another PC, that same NDI software has NDI monitor built into it and you can stream that up to a second computer. This is a great solution for if you want to do a two PC gaming streaming rig, you can have one be the streaming computer, but instead of using an actual capture card, physical hardware card, you can use software and you can stream the two computers together. You can also control the computer with the NDI monitor without having to like switch your keyboard and mouse over. Anyways, whole nother video for that maybe in the future. But for now, that's how you do that. Uh, it's a little bit of a cost to get into it, but totally worth it, 100%. Paid it off instantly once I was able to sit on the couch and enjoy playing Cyberpunk from my PC to my living room TV. So I'm excited for the future of using this thing for anything else. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Casey with Hardware Productions. Catch you in the next video.